Resourceful Designer, episode 240, Understanding Perceived Value. Welcome to the Resourceful Designer Podcast, offering solutions to streamline your graphic and web design business so you can get back to designing. And now, your host. He wishes he was a better dancer than he actually is. Mark Descote. How does that term go? Two left feet? Yep, that's me. I've got absolutely no rhythm when it comes to dancing. But luckily, there are other things in life I do excel at. Anyway. In this episode of the podcast, I'm going to tell you a story that hopefully will get the point across when it comes to understanding perceived value. I'm also going to share a tip that may help you with some social proof. Now, what have I been up to? Well, I was really disappointed this morning. Yesterday, I submitted a logo concept to a client, actually two different concepts, And I thought I had done an excellent job on both of them, but the client got back to me and they did not like either of the designs I gave, which I found a little strange because I went over the brief and all the details. I think I hit everything right on the head, but it's one of those things that happens. The client didn't like it. In their exact words, they thought the logo looked too traditional for their industry and they wanted something a little bit more quote unquote fun. So it's back to the drawing board. Now on a more positive note, Spotify, now I don't know if you listen to the podcast on Spotify or not, but Spotify released their, they called it Wrapped, and it's the year 2020 in review for your podcast. So I got to look at my review for Resourceful Designer, and there's some really interesting stats here. Now, of course, this is just on Spotify, which is just one of the platforms I'm on. But according to Spotify, my listenership grew the most in South Africa. So if you're listening from South Africa, thank you so much for tuning in. That's where I saw the most listener growth this year, with the Netherlands coming in a close second. Now, the podcast was listened to in 52 different countries on Spotify in 2020. And it was listened to by a total of 4,515 unique listeners. And that is just amazing. And again, that's just on Spotify. So I thought that was really cool to receive that this week. And it kind of brightened up my week a little bit, just seeing how well the podcast is doing around the world. I've got a global audience. Now, the other thing this week, I'm very happy to say that I was able to hold off on all the Black Friday sales. I didn't buy a single thing. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about Cyber Monday. I did cave in and I did buy one deal, and that is the deal for Envato Elements, which I've heard about for a long time, but I hadn't actually purchased. I have bought individual things from the Envato Marketplace before, but for Black Friday, they had a special deal on Envato Elements, and I decided to take them up on it. So now it's one of the resources I will be using for my graphic files and other things to help me with my jobs. But other than that, did a little bit of podcast artwork for some people, worked a little bit on a couple of websites, including one of my own. I actually took the very first website I ever designed in WordPress, which was a website for my other podcasting company, Solo Talk Media. And it had been on an old Elegant Themes theme back in the day before Divi came out. Elegant Themes had, I forget, it was 80 some different themes. Well, now they concentrate solely on Divi and those other themes are all outdated and no longer supported. Well, I was using one of them and it was, there was some stuff that was not working right. And I decided this website, I built it in 2013 and I hadn't updated it really since, or I mean, changed it. I have updated plugins and stuff, but hadn't really changed it. And I thought it's way past the time. So I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, but I switched it over to Divi, made a few minor adjustments, probably spent a couple of hours on it and that was it. But now it's up and running again using Divi. So that's just a little bit of what I've been up to this week. Now, I remember last week how I told you the resourceful designer community was quiet because of Thanksgiving week in the U.S. Well, Thanksgiving week is behind us. Now, this week, there was a lot of hustle and bustle, a lot of communication, a lot of talking, getting to know people. And I think the community, those in it, are having a great time. And I can't wait to open up again in early 2021. 
I'm not sure exactly when the date's going to be, but it'll be fairly soon, I believe, once the new year arrives. And I've already got a number of people on the waiting list wanting to join. And I just want to put out there, if you would like to join a community of great designers, great peers who can help you, can be your sounding board, help you critique things, give you ideas when you're, you're looking for some, and offer to help. So many people in the community are helping each other or hiring each other to do work. Well, if you're interested in a community like that, visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash community and sign up for the waiting list, and I will notify you once enrollment opens up again in early 2021. And now, this week's tip of the week. And this week's tip is Google Alerts. Now, I do believe I talked about this in the past, but it merits bringing it up again. And the reason I want to say this is if you have a company name and you're designing under something other than yourself, although you can still do this if you're designing with your name, you should set up a Google alert for your business name. And if you're unfamiliar with Google alerts, you, you visit google.com slash alerts. And what it does is Google will email you anytime your business name shows up in search results. So if it shows up, uh, like somebody writes a new article or, or mentions your business in some post or whatever, anytime something new shows up on Google, they will email it to you. Now, this is great, as I said, for social proof, because if somebody mentions you in a comment on something or uh, writes an article or whatever you appear in the newspaper, you know, maybe it's a, a new company and they mention that, uh, yeah, we just launched a brand new website designed by and they mention you. Well, this notifies you and allows you to reach out and thank the person or comment or whatever. It just, it gives you a chance to engage, which is all part of the whole communication process for building client loyalty and growing brand awareness and the whole bit. Now, the other reason you can do this is in case somebody for some reason leaves a negative review. Maybe they leave a, a Google review saying, oh, your services were no good or uh, I didn't like what they did. And this gives you a chance to quickly get on top of things and hopefully remedy the si situation before things get out of hand. So either way, it's always a good idea to set up a Google alert for your business. Now, I have one set up for my business and don't expect your email to be bombarded with all sorts of emails. I might get two or three emails a year that show my business name in it, but when I do get them, I am really glad because, as I said, sometimes these are things that I would have never noticed or I would have noticed only months later that I am notified as soon as Google finds out about them. So to set up an alert, and you can set up alerts for all sorts of stuff. I probably have a couple of dozen different alerts set up to email me for different terms if they ever show up, including things for the podcast. So to set up a Google alert, just visit google.com slash alerts, and you can set them up. And now, understanding perceived value. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different this episode. I want to tell you a story, and I'm not talking like in the past where I've shared personal stories or stuff. I mean an actual story. So here goes. Once upon a time, I know it's a cliche way to start the story, but I'm going to go with it anyways. Once upon a time, there was a young graphic designer by the name of Tom. Several months ago, the large corporation that Tom worked for was acquired. As part of the merger process, the new company dissolved the design department where Tom worked, and he lost his job. Tom was upset, of course, but he decided to see this as an opportunity. With the help of his severance money, he decided to do something he had been dreaming of doing for quite a while open his own home-based design business. Now one day, on the way back from a client meeting, Tom decided to stop in and visit his father. Hey dad, where are you? I'm in the attic. Tom made his way up to the attic, a place he had seldom been in, even when he lived in the house with his parents. His father was sitting amid several open boxes. What are you doing up here? I was taking out holiday decorations when, well, nostalgia got the best of me and I decided to go through some of these old storage bins. Some of these haven't been open in decades. What are you doing here? Oh, I had a meeting with a new client not far from here, and I thought I'd drop by before heading home. How'd the meeting go? asked his father. <sighs> well, I got the job. Well, you don't sound too happy about it, replied the father. Uh, it's not that. Dad, sometimes I think I made a mistake starting my own design business. It's not as easy as I thought it would be. 
Take this new client, for example. He's a handyman, you know, one of those jack-of-all-trades. He does odd jobs for people. Well, he's looking for a logo that he can put on the side of his van and maybe on business cards. What's wrong with that? asked the father. Price, replied Tom. He only has a budget of $150. That's not a lot of money to design a logo. You know, Dad, I read articles, I watch videos, I listen to podcasts, and they all say how graphic and web designers should be charging more money for their services. But I just don't see how. I mean, I'm lucky this guy is willing to pay me $150. Do you know there are several online places where you can get a logo design for under $10? How are designers these days supposed to compete with that? The father looked at his son thoughtfully, then nodded inwardly to himself, and simply said, Well, Thomas, that's a tough one, but I'm sure you'll work it out. After a brief pause, the father seemed to change the subject. Hey, Thomas, look in that bin over there. You see that wooden box? Take it out. Tom looked in the bin and pulled out a small, ornately carved wooden box. With a nod from his father, he opened it. The box was lined with old black felt. Resting on the felt was a very old-looking watch. The gold on it was tarnished, the glass was cracked and slightly foggy, and the well-worn leather band looked dry and cracked. What's this? asked Tom. That, my son, is a family heirloom. Your, oh, let's see now. Your great-great-grandfather was given that watch by a family he helped during the Civil War. At the end of the war, he called it his good luck charm. He passed it on to his son when he enlisted in World War I, who then passed it on to your grandfather, who wore it during World War II. And when Grandpa passed away, the watch was passed to me. And one day, it'll be yours. It doesn't work anymore, but it's part of our family history. Well, that's pretty cool, Dad. Why haven't I ever seen this before? To be honest, said the father, I had all but forgotten about it until today when I found it in the box. Hey, Thomas, do me a favor. On your way home, can you stop by the pawn shop? I don't want to sell the watch, but I'd be curious to know what they'd pay for it. Sure, Dad, why not? A little while later, Tom called his father. Dad, I had just walked out of the pawn shop. They offered $20 for the watch. They said it looked old, so somebody may be interested in it, but since it's not working, that's the best they could offer. Well, that's disappointing, said the father. Hmm. You know, there's an antique store two blocks from where you are now. Do you have time to ask them what they think? Yeah, sure, I could do that, replied Tom. Later, Tom called his father again. Hey, guess what, Dad? The lady at the shop was intrigued by the watch. She says that watches that old are a rare find and offered $300 for it. Well, that's a lot better, said the father. Do you have time for one more stop? Take it down to the museum on the edge of town and show it to the curator there. Tom hesitated a bit, but then agreed. Later that afternoon, Tom bursted into his father's home. Dad, Dad, you won't believe it, he said excitedly. The museum curator was so impressed when I showed him the watch. He said that pieces like that would be a wonderful addition to their collection. He offered to buy it for $50,000. Tom's father looked at his son for a moment, then asked, So what does that tell you about the watch? Well, it tells me that the guy at the pawn shop and the lady at the antique store had no idea of the true value of the watch. That's where you're wrong, son, replied the father. All three places you visited were correct in their valuing of the watch. What do you mean, Dad? For the guy at the pawn shop, it's just the watch. Sure, it may be old, but that doesn't matter to him. He sees watches come and go all the time. If you accepted his $20 offer, great. He'd add it to the other watches for sale and forget about it until somebody showed interest in it. And if you didn't accept his offer, it's no big deal to him. There'll always be someone else with another old watch to sell. There's no real value in it for him. The woman at the antique store, she did see a bit more worth in the watch because she's used to dealing with old things. She could appreciate it as a rare antiquity and valued it as such. But to her, it's still just an old watch to display amongst all the other old things she has in her shop. Now the museum curator, that guy, saw more than just the watch. Sure, as part of their collection, it would be just another museum piece for people to admire. But it goes beyond that. What he saw was not the value of the watch itself, 
but the value the watch would bring to the museum. Adding that watch to their collection would enhance the experience of the people who visited the museum. It would give the museum another story to tell. It would give them something new to expand upon. To the museum curator, that enhanced experience that visitors would receive because of that watch is a lot more valuable than the watch itself. And that's why he was willing to offer so much more for it. All three people you showed it to saw the exact same watch, but each one saw a different perceived value based on their circumstances, and none of them were wrong in their perception. Tom, son, the same principle applies to your design business. That handyman you told me about this morning, he doesn't really care what his logo looks like. He just knows he needs a logo. As long as people can read it and recognize it, he'll be happy. And that's why he only wanted to spend what he did. He has a low perceived value of what you can do for him. Let me ask you something, son. Does your knowledge as a graphic designer, or are the skills that you use to design logos any different whether the client pays you $150 or, let's say, $1,500? No, replied Tom. And do you think that designers who charge thousands of dollars for logos are that much better at what they do than you are? Tom replied again, no. No, agreed the father. The difference between you and designers charging a lot more is they're positioning themselves to go after clients who see the value in good design. Clients then understand that a logo is more than just a pretty graphic picture. They understand the value a well-designed logo can bring to their company. Just like the watch, there are clients out there who just want the cheapest design option available to them. Then there are clients who understand that good design does matter and therefore costs money, but it's an expense and they can afford it only to a certain extent. And then there are clients who know that design goes beyond the actual piece itself that is designed. When implemented right, Good design can drastically affect their bottom line in a positive way. To them, design is an investment with an actual ROI attached to it. And that's why they assign so much more value to it. So Tom, you've told me that what you do is no different than those other high-end designers do. Is that correct? Yes, replied Tom questioningly. Then son, Be confident in what you do, because you are an amazing designer. You just need to decide what type of clients you want to spend your time working with. The ones who don't appreciate your value, or the ones who do and are willing to pay for it. And Tom? Yes, Dad? Don't get any fancy ideas about the watch. I'm holding on to it for now. You can do with it what you will once I'm gone. So there you have it. My story on perceived value. I know this was a really different approach to take to the podcast. I hope you enjoyed the story and that it showed how people assign different values to the exact same thing. Just like the watch in my story, what you offer as a designer will be perceived by different people as worth different amounts. So it's up to you to figure out who the right people are and find a way to market your services to them. You know, earlier this week, as I was contemplating this episode, I was trying to figure out a good way to end it. And then Brian, a member of the resourceful designer community, posted an image in our Slack group that I think is perfect to end on. It read, there are people out there who are less qualified than you doing exactly what you have always wanted to do. The only difference is that they chose to believe in themselves. Those are words that every designer should live by. Now, I would love to know what you thought of my story. Did it help you understand what perceived value is? Let me know. Leave a comment for the episode at resourcefuldesigner.com slash episode 240. And don't forget, if you don't already have them, set yourself up some Google alerts for your business name to be notified anytime somebody mentions you. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Mark Decote, wishing you all the best with your design business and reminding you to stay creative.
Thanks for listening to the Resourceful Designer Podcast at resourcefuldesigner.com.